once I put my puppy away in the crate, here's another place where I am really careful not to create routine. A lot of the times we create our own separation related stress or separation anxiety by being very routine. You know, if I just pop my puppy away in the crate and then go and pick up my keys and put on my coat and open the door and leave, pretty soon my puppy is going to start to associate the feelings of the crate with me leaving because they're going to chain those behaviors together, right? And there are some puppies who will be like, oh, okay, you're leaving. Mm -hmm. No big deal. You know what? See you later. I'm going to take a nap. Right. (laughs) It's been, it's been a slice. Thanks for the entertainment. And there are some puppies that are going to be very, very stressed out about the idea of being alone all day. Right. So when it comes to the actual leaving process, I like to mix things up. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not just going to go put on my coat, put my keys in my pocket, open the door, close the door, walk out. I'm going to leave myself a little five minute window maybe between putting my puppy away and actually leaving myself. Mm -hmm. And I might go from the crate to the front door and I might open and close the door. And then I might go back to the kitchen and Mm -hmm. stomp around in the kitchen for a minute. I might go to the front door and then pick up my keys and put them in my pocket and then go to the bathroom before I go, right? I'm going to mix up these little patterns and routines, especially in the early stages, so that my puppy doesn't latch on to any one specific trigger to say, oh, that's going to signify me being alone. Because they will trace that back Mm -hmm. to being alone, being isolated, Mm -hmm. whether it's in the crate or not. There's a lot of dogs will end. Actually, it's it's a much more likely scenario that they end up with separation anxiety or separation related stress if they are left loose or if they're left in a bigger setup than they need. Right. You know, puppies, even though it's counterintuitive for us humans because we want bigger, right? Right. Bigger Mm -hmm. is better. We're waiting Mm -hmm. for the bigger, better deal. But with puppies, a tight little cave is what's going to make them feel more safe. They feel cozy and den-like in there. Yeah, exactly. Whereas in a big crate, they feel like they're out in the open. There's there's no safe place. Yeah, exactly. Crate, pen, like leaving your puppy in a big X pen with a pee pad there and a whole bunch of toys. And with even with the crate in there with the door open, that's going to create a lot more anxiety for your puppy than mm-hmm. leaving them in a nice tight little crate, getting them used to it, of course, before yep. you start leaving them solo in it. But I also like to leave on background noise for them yep. so that they're not triggering on any specific sound in the day. Yes. You know, you hear about dogs in apartments or dogs, on, even dogs in houses, knowing it's four o'clock. Right. And that's because they listen and they pay attention to the triggers in the environment. Right. Yeah. So if all of a sudden there's an increased amount of traffic on your street at Mm -hmm. around four o'clock, that's going to be their trigger every day. Yeah. If every day the elevator starts, you know, really getting active Mm -hmm. and the the dog hears that, that's going to be a trigger. Like all those things are triggers. So I want to leave on some background music. We've had amazing success with the McCann Dogs Music Channel. Yes. It will help to just dampen the noises that are happening around. Um, Most of my puppies, I like to cover their crates too. When I want them to just like turn off, go to sleep, relax, I'll cover the crate, I'll leave on the background noise and that keeps them from going, is that you? Are you coming? What are you doing? Where'd you go? Mm. Where's the person? Right. (laughs) You know, they just basically, there's there's not those triggers out there. So they relax, they go to sleep. 